Hi everyone, join us to discover some awesome beaches, some hidden caves, and to hear a sailor's tale of one of the most memorable storms of Neil's entire life. Bringing home Wayfinder from Thetis Island to Maple Bay. Hi everyone, this is Melanie, my husband Neil, and our son Decker. And that's Bella, our dash hound. We are a normal Canadian family who has chosen to live a non-normal life on the ocean for the past 15 years. Join our family as we restore our ferro-cement schooner Kiva, journey around Vancouver Island, and get ready to explore the world. Say good morning. Good morning, people. We're on our third leg of the week. We're uh, making a jaunt between Titus Island and Maple Bay today. We're going home. It's sunny and clear, and we're out of here. And so this is a very lovely Thetis Island Marine. marina. Let's zoom it up here so you guys can see. Sorry we didn't get a closer view, but <clears throat> we're just on our way up. So on the left is Thetis Island Marina. On the right is Telegraph Cove Marina. This area, this bay, is actually called Telegraph Cove. But uh, it's a beautiful day and it's really nice in here. So this is a First Nations island. In other words, not open for public touring. So the Penelicut Band lives here. So for those of you who have never sailed in BC waters, BC ferries means get the hell out of my way. They're way bigger and faster than you are. So they travel at, I don't know, anywhere 20 from to 20 knots. to 35 knots, depending on the size of the ferry. And, uh, but, if you are in distress, they will always stop. And they have highly trained crew, and they will always stop, but stay out of their way. It's pretty much what BC Ferries means. Island, a very fabulous fun little place to go. The white power boats that you see there, that's where most people anchor. We've been in there and anchored. As a matter of fact, I think that was our first date. I knew nothing about boating. I could have been in Greece for all I knew, but Neil tells me that's where we went, is was Tent Island. <laughs> yeah. And then to the left over there, it's a bit hard to see, but there's a sandy, a beautiful white sandy beach that if you've got the right kind of boat you can just beach her and go there for an afternoon picnic done that that's pretty awesome we'll have to take we we'll have to take decker there that'd be fun neil used to do log salvage had his own tug and uh worked this area extensively we're honestly not even using charts right now we know exactly where we are and uh and i'm not saying that out of arrogance we have driven these waters countless times and actually wasn't this behind this island over here where, where you had that horrible storm About, uh, 15 years ago I guess the winds blew in from the south from over top of Ganges, Salt Spring Island blew all the way down straight down the mouth down the Lady Smith Harbor, Harbor. And, uh, You're good. Coffee. Oh. <laughs> um, I came home in my 30 foot tugboat taking waves over the bridge on the bottom of the cabin. It's about, about uh, 8 12 feet in the air. Uh, it was the day my grandfather passed away. Who was an old salt himself. He was part of the, wasn't he a mer in the Merchant Marine? He's a Merchant Marine, a steamboat captain, oiler, oiler, did it all. And um, on 
my trip home I got the news that he had passed away and that's when the wind blew up really strong. And Neil was extremely close to his grandfather. And um, I came home. And there was a tug. Tell them about the big tug. There was about a 175 foot ocean going tug that was in to Shemain us to get fuel. And uh, he came out and followed me because I was taking waves over top of the tugboat disappearing and he thought it would be a good idea to just follow me for a while. I think try. there was some radio conversation along the lines of what the bleepity bleep are you doing out here? And Neil said I gotta get home. I have to get home and the tug broke the waves for you as long as he could. He ran right up to about here and then he peeled off and went out to the open and I went Follow the shoreline up the street past Crofton to Osborne Bay Road or Osborne Bay up to uh, up to the point and then up to Sam's Narrows and I was home. And once I got in front of Crofton, there was no more wind or waves. They all kind of just dropped off. Yeah. So how long uh, from the point that the waves started to where you got to Crofton? How long a time frame was that? Can you guess? About seven hours. And how long with that, on normal conditions, how long would that take you to travel? About four hours. Yeah. And uh, Neil's dad, who was a truck driver at the time, was uh, driving along the road and saw Neil. You called him on the phone, didn't you? We were talking on the phone and yeah. the radio. And, and uh, yeah. His dad followed him along on the road the best he could, keeping an eye out for him. <laughs> the giant seat. Yes, and by this point, Neil was inside the cabin, taking green water right over the top. Counting get... the fish in the front window. Yeah, believe it or not, it can get pretty gnarly through here. I've done, I've been through here myself. Not quite in that storm, but uh, I've been through some wild weather through here. You wouldn't think, looking today, but it can get wild in here. And uh, Neil was soaking wet, standing there, driving the boat in his ginjis, his underwear, and uh, with the heat diesel stove going inside the heater, or inside the boat. No, I couldn't get the diesel stove going. No, you couldn't get it? Oh, you had I thought you had a heater going. Oh, no. no? Diesel stove, uh, salt water, come down the chimney and put the diesel stove on. Oh, uh, that's a bad day. So I, I kept the motor running and I opened up the hatch Floorboard. Well, that's what it was. Cause heat inside the boat, and uh, away we went. Yep. So, retrieved two dinghies at the trip. Pulled home a Boston <laughs> Whaler. I found a aluminum, a tall foot aluminum. What else did I find? Oh, something else. Oh, a robo. We found a robo that trip. So I brought three home. Did you really? Yeah. Before or after the storm? During the storm, I found <laughs> Of course you did, darling. And in the middle of the waves, washing over the deck, I would go out with my pipe pole, grab the bow line, retie them, and keep going again. Drag them home. Yeah. I'm laughing because that's completely a normal thing for Neil to do. Most <coughs> people would be pooping their pants, but not my boy. It was just a nice day like this, just a little rough. Was it raining? No, it was just windy and, and a big wave. And how many years have you been on the ocean, love? Oh, that's a long time. Let's see. Thirty. Getting my age away. I'm thirty-five I'm years. Say at least thirty years. At least, and that was the worst storm you've ever been in. No, I've been in worse. You've been in worse? One of the worst that you've it's been in. One of the worst. It's one of the most memorable. Yeah, well, plus you were in a 30 footer, which. 30 foot tug, shallow draft, so. Yeah. 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 Little but. cork in the big ocean. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, it's a beautiful area and can get very gnarly. Bowen Queen, that's the one that goes to Vesuvius. 
broken queen. The broken queen. <laughs> Honestly. Barely moving. Barely moving. I don't know what's going on. They're usually like twice as fast. Their 15 minute run just turned into four hours. Yeah, like holy mackerel. They tra usually they're back by now. Is he training a new captain or something? Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should go offer him assistance. Yeah, he stopped. It kind of looks like he stopped. We should offer him assistance. It's the rules of the, the laws of the, the ocean. Somebody's broken down. Yeah, we could go give him a tow. That's where we've come from. This is Samson Narrows, the first part. It's just really pretty in here. Giant log in there. Yeah. Great big one in behind everything. Yeah. Some nice logs there. Yeah, it's a great big one. Yeah, watch the rocks, hun. <laughs> That's a nice little beach. Lots of times there's eagles in here too. Both at French Creek and at Thetis, there was a resident bald eagle. Massive, and I could never get pictures of it because it was, I there's never had the camera. Cave. Ooh, there's caves. Oh, wow, look at those. The high tides are underwater. Oh, yeah, you can see the tide line. That's cool. And they go in quite a way. Oh, and in case anybody's wondering, our son and dog are with grandparents. Hooray for grandparents! Thank you. There's the tug. He's got quite a few logs there. What about... How many sections do you think that is? 20, 30. 20 30 sections? When tugs pull uh, log booms, which is what that is, they're put together in what's called a section. So, and there's dimensions and stuff of how big a section is. But anyways, if you're ever on the radio and you hear a tug saying that they're pulling however many number of sections, that gives you an idea of how big the tow is. And we're home. Kind of sad actually, I kind of wanted to stay out, I have to admit. This is the Maple Bay Yacht Club, not where we live. And that red dock, that's our dock where we have our dinghy moored. And this is Maple Bay.